I'm sure the gene discovery has changed um, not only the excitement and enthusiasm in the lab, but maybe some of the things that you're focused on. Can you elaborate on uh, what some of the changes are since the discovery? Yeah, I, th I think the word um, focus is exactly what the gene discovery has meant to us and meant, meant to research. Um, we have um, always, since we started working uh, on FOP, uh, looked towards the patients and the development of the disease to give us clues and to help us understand and to uh, formulate the questions that we can investigate to begin to uh, understand the disease and to further our understanding of, of FOP. Uh, but we were always um, looking at the symptoms and what we really needed to understand was the root cause, what really was wrong um, in FOP that was leading to this disease. So um, we had a lot of clues and a lot of very uh, good information, but we didn't know exactly what our target was. Um, if you think about, um, you have a radio that is uh, creating a lot of static. There could be a lot of different reasons that, a lot of different places that things could be going wrong in that radio to create static. But if you find the loose wire and the specific loose wire, you know, you know that, you know, hitting the radio on the side isn't going to, you know, get this to work or, you know, replacing a knob isn't going to, you know, fix the radio. You have to go in there, see the wire and fix that specific problem. And that's really what uh, identifying the gene mutation has done for us. We know now exactly uh, where to focus on, where the problem is. And all the information that we had gained up until that point put that into context, gave us information uh, to move forward and to say, okay, now that we know what the problem is, what specifically can we do to figure it when we can really focus and really target now? Exactly, and, and the identification of the gene, as Eileen said, um, uh, immediately, immediately, uh, I mean, as soon as we were sure that that was the gene, that ACVR1, ALK2, technical name. A cure very rapidly is how I remember <laughs> it. <laughs> ACVR1. <laughs> that as soon as that gene uh, was discovered, it immediately predicted the types of medications and approaches w that would eventually solve FOP, some of which are now uh, are appearing on the horizon. Um, the work really focuses, I think, in, in four areas. Uh, what, what is the mutation and what are the variations in the mutation that we're seeing in a very, very small percentage of other patients that gives us the depth of perspective to understand the next question is, what are the mechanisms? How does this gene, how, do, how does this wire malfunction to cause this static that can, you know, tr that can uh, uh, set off an atom bomb? Uh, the third question is, what are the models? What are the animal models that can be used to, to test out these, uh, these theories? We can't do experimentations. Uh, uh, patients, of course, you can't do biopsies. You can't take lesions to look under the microscope. So what animal models could be developed to test these out? Uh, and we have animal models now that are being developed either in our lab or with collaborators around the world that involve the fruit fly, fish, and mice, our little FOP zoo, that we can begin to look at these, uh, uh, these processes. And finally, uh, identification of target drugs, of types of um, compounds. I won't call them drugs yet because they're not drugs, but compounds that might effectively slow down or stop the process of extra bone formation uh, and that we need to test them out in these various animal models to see, number one, are they effective? And number two, probably most importantly, are they going to be safe to be right. used in children? So mutations, mechanisms, models, and medicines is really what this, uh, uh, what this entire FOP research effort and our collaborative effort around the world has become in the last two years. Uh, all focused, as Eileen said, on the, the single most important piece of knowledge that's been learned about this condition in uh, almost 300 years, and that is the identity of the FOPG.